Liu Changqing, listening to someone playing the lute. In quiet chill, from the seven strings there rises the faint sound of a cool wind in the pines. It is an old song, and we both love it. People these days rarely play it anymore. So we continue with the second of the pentasyllabic quatrains of Liu Shangqing included in this section of the anthology. Uh, we've encountered a lot of poems in the whole series that are about music, that are about the appreciation of music, that are about the synesthetic impressions or images that arise in the mind when listening to music. I think we had a few poems by Li Qi, I think it was, with these topics or, or even describing unusual or exotic musical instruments. So um, playing music, appreciating music, has traditionally been one of the aesthetical uh, requirements uh, that have been expected of scholar officials. I'm not sure this was quite as rigidly codified or, or stereotyped in the Tang Dynasty. In later dynasties, at least from the Ming onwards, uh, it was traditional to associate scholars with the achievements of calligraphy, of uh, poetry composition, of amateurish but highly um, but high quality painting, and of uh, playing um, the game uh, that's called Wei Qi, Chinese chess, better known in the West for through its Japanese name of Go. So playing music, listening to music, and, and specifically the, the lute, the Chinese lute, the qin or gu qin, is uh, very closely associated with the, the type of elegant refinement and sensibility, moral and aesthetic, that is expected of a scholar official. So it shouldn't surprise us that it should be a common topic and, you know, uh, texts, poems about the, the lute had, you know, existed since, I don't know, since at least the Han Dynasty. Anyway, going back to this specific poem, listening to someone playing the lute. So the, the, the background, the situation we can imagine is thus, uh, Liu Changqing's poetic persona is somewhere and uh, he listens and he hears to the sound of music. He, he is not making it, but somebody, in the poem it's not specified who, perhaps uh, Liu Changqing doesn't even know, but someone in, in the whereabouts is playing a chin, is playing the chin, creating some music. More specifically, they are playing an old-fashioned tune, to which uh, Liu Changqing naturally warms up. So the topic of the poem is music, you could say. Um, the, the effects of hearing a chin being played, and especially the first couplet, um, associates the sound of the chin with another sound. So, so here we don't quite have a synesthetic element or, 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 or visual images arising from the sound of music. It's more like another uh, one sound evokes another sound, although of course the second sound brings with it its own set of images and of other uh, impressions on the senses. So, so the first couplet tells us that, you know, we hear, I'm hearing a chin and it sounds like this, in this case wind in the pines, and the, the second couplet um, adds another element or another sub-theme, which is um, nostalgia, and uh, it seems to imply that at the time of writing this poem, Liu Changqing is probably an old person, you know, because he is, he is making that typical old person <laughs> statement of, you know, the music that I used to like is old fashioned now because I am old and now people listen to new things. But whoever is playing this instrument, uh, he has my own, he shares my own tastes and perhaps my own age. Or otherwise it's a lucky coincidence that this person uh, happens to like an old-fashioned tune, which I feel so close to. And here the closeness between the tune and the poet is probably meant to be extended as, 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 as metaphorical or symbolic. Like the poet is also an old-fashioned figure uh, living in old age. And we know Liu Changqing led a pretty, pretty long life. Full times, I think he reached his 60s or 70s. 
Okay, um, I think that's, that's enough for the general impression. Let's take a look at the other two couplets. So first couplet. In quiet chill, from the seven strings, there rises the faint sound of a cool wind in the pines. So we get no clear indication of the season. Uh, it's probably, because of the references to chilliness, I would say it's probably autumn. Yeah? So there's a quiet chill. This is probably an autumn, a late autumn evening or night. Yeah, I mean, this is only lightly implied, it doesn't have to be, but it's chilly. So it's probably night or close to night, or it's probably autumn, or both. Yeah. So in this quiet chill, we might imagine the poet out in the veranda, enjoying the chilliness. From the seven strings, the, the chin has seven strings, there rises the faint sound of cool wind in the pines. The sound has to be faint, probably because the instrument is not, and the, and the player are probably not that close to the poet. But also the chin is a very subdued instrument. You have to be really close to a chin to hear it sound properly, especially in an age before microphones. So we hear this faint sound, and it's equated to the cool wind in the pines. So it matches the coolness of the environment. Now, associating any sound with wind in the pines is a very conventional metaphor. You'd say it's even trite. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's a staple fare of lots of Chinese poetry and Japanese poetry as well, wind in the pines. Uh, so there's this lovely sound, this, this sowing of the wind in autumn. Well, it can be at any time of the year, really. Um, you know, pines are evergreen, but when, anyway, it's this cool, refreshing, whistling, sowing sound between the pines. And of course, this is a, an oral image. It's a sound, but it evokes images through, through all of the other senses. I mean, you can imagine visually the lovely sight of the green pines shaken slightly by the wind. And, and the deep green of their evergreen leaves in any season of the year, which would specially shine in late autumn or early winter, when all the other greenery is generally dead. You can imagine uh, uh, an impression on your sense of smell, like the smell of a pine forest, uh, the resin-infused uh, aromatic perfume of, of the pine trees being carried by the wind. Uh, you can imagine a certain physical tact-like impression, like the, the cool wind caressing your skin. So, you know, it's, a, it's an image that, as I said, it, it's, it's used a lot, very frequently in all types of Chinese-Japanese texts, wind in the pines, as an elegant, natural image. So here, the sound of this chin is equated with this impression. It wouldn't be unreasonable to suppose, perhaps, that even the name of the tune uh, is perhaps Wind in the Pines, or that it tries to imitate the Wind in the Pines, and that is why it creates such an impression in the, in the listener. Second couplet. And so the first couplet tells us about the poet hearing this sound. The second couplet tells us a little bit more about the specific melody that's being played, and about the poet's reaction to it. It is an old song, and we both love it. People these days rarely play it anymore. So it's an old song, an old-fashioned song. It's out of joint in the current times. So the, the, the translator here includes the idea that we both love it. I think this is not actually present explicitly in the original poem, at least not in another version that I've checked uh, along with the reading character by character of the poem. So it's implicit, of course, because the player of the, the, the chin probably likes the piece. If he or she did not like it, he or she wouldn't be playing it. But the poem explicitly focuses on the fact that the poetic persona of Liu Changqing likes it and is aware that it's an old song that is that does not match the times. So... Again, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, I think this very clearly points, this is very clearly a metaphorical line. So it's the idea that just like the song is old-fashioned and from another time, I am old-fashioned and from another time. And this is one of the reasons why I like it. Probably I listened to it in my youth and I enjoyed it. But also, like this old-fashioned piece, I myself am an old-fashioned piece. Uh, I remember Liu Changqing was a poet from the 
on the High Tang period, but uh, he continued living until, I think, pretty late in the 8th century and serving in the slightly convulsive uh, times after the Anushan Rebellion. So, a nice poem about a beautiful music with a haunting melody, but also a nice poem in that, in its very brief space, it also manages to tackle another topic or, or to transmit this impression of the poet as an old-fashioned man, no longer in keeping with the times, but who still feels moved by finding a parallelism to him, or a, a metaphor, in an old piece of music that he enjoys in itself, but that he also enjoys as a symbol. So, quite a nice piece by Liu Changcheng.